was watching My Strange Addiction like years and years ago and there was a lady on it and the story was that she was addicted to coffee enemas. So this Halloween for a big project for YouTube, I really wanted to create a spooky haunted gingerbread house. This was kind of inspired by Christine McConnell's work. I'm a massive fan of her super elaborate gingerbread houses and I really wanted to try my hand at creating one and challenging myself. I've dabbled in food art once or twice on this channel and a couple other times just in general in life, which you can see on my Instagram and TikTok. It's something that I find really fun because I love art projects that give me a little bit of a challenge. Food is really hard to work with. Um, so I have no idea how Christine McConnell managed just to make her thing so beautiful but obviously she's an alien walking among us and um you know i i shouldn't hold myself to the standards that non-humans are at because she is obviously above human i wanted a really typical classic american haunted house so looking for that second empire kind of victorian gothic mansion with the mansard roof and the widow's walk and the spooky stained glass windows that was really the goal when I typed this into Google, I found a lot of images of the Bates Mansion from the film Psycho, so thank you, Mr. Hitchcock. It was ultimately a simple enough design that I felt like I could probably pull it off while also being complex enough that, you know, maybe it'd get me five whole likes on Instagram. It was complex enough that it felt challenging. And my goal initially was to try and add two really big back towers to the structure, but they kept crumbling and I'll get into why in a second. So I saved a bunch of photos of the Bates Mansion and I imported these into Photoshop so that I could start outlining the design and working on my pattern. and this worked pretty well. I was able to do that and I got a pretty decent 3D model going. The way that I ensured my sizing would be correct was that I used an A4 size canvas initially, printed that out, decided that it should be about 200% bigger. Then I took the pattern in Photoshop and I just blew that up by 200% and selected parts of it and put them across several different canvases to print out. Very similar to what you see in PDF sewing patterns that you download from Etsy and other online stores. Also, you will note that I am very good at measuring and it shows up a lot in this video. To make my mock-up, I used a sheet of general purpose cardstock and I would not recommend this. As I found out, it would be a lot better and more accurate when measuring things if what you're to do is to get something like box cardboard, like from Amazon boxes or other um, packing and postage boxes, because you need something that's a little closer to what the gingerbread thickness will actually be, which ends up being about a quarter of an inch when you roll it out. Apparently this is something called a building allowance that you'll find out about. I had no idea as I was doing this. And then when I was like talking about my problems with my partner, he was like, oh yeah, like that's a building allowance. And that's, you know, when carpenters and builders measure stuff, that's kind of what they have to take into account with mock-ups. And I was like, hmm. Good to know. However, I found out that you can fill all of your mistakes with royal icing, which is what I did. And honestly, you can probably do this in a real house. Don't do that in a real house because um, you'll get ants. From my final 3D image, I was able to create a floor plan and then it was time to start baking the gingerbread pieces. So when you make an enormous gingerbread house, there are a couple of things that you actually need to do. One is you need to alter your recipe to leave out any leavening agents like baking soda or raising flour. You don't want any of that because you want things to remain the same size as you bake. And then the other thing that you kind of want to do is you sort of want to almost burn your gingerbread. You want it to get quite dark golden brown around the edges because moisture in a gingerbread house is not the goal. It will cause the structure to crumble or bend or crack. And all of that is just really frustrating because 
ultimately you are trying to build something out of a cookie. So I cut out and then baked all of my pieces using the cardboard mock-up. Make sure you remove any sticky tape while you're doing this because the smell of burning plastic is not cool. I found that a really easy way to throw all of these complex little pieces without losing too much shape was to cut them out and roll them out on a sheet of baking paper and then all you do is flip and you can pop them in the baking tray and they're pretty much intact. So for this gingerbread house, I wanted to create the illusion of stained glass windows and to do this, I needed to create some candy glass. I've made candy glass a couple of times for some um, broken glass style cupcakes that I made at the beginning of October. And it's actually super, super simple. All you really need to do is take glucose syrup, which is what we call it here in Australia, granulated white sugar, and then some water. And you'll need a candy thermometer so that you can track the temperature because the temperature is really important. You heat everything on the stove while stirring constantly to about 160 degrees. And you try not to let it get over that because that's when you're in the danger of, burn of the burning zone. And then all you have to do is add whatever food dyes or flavoring oils you want and you can pour it out onto either a sheet of baking paper. I did this by laying out clean sheets of baking paper and letting my completely cool gingerbread window cutout sections sit on top of those and then I just poured it all out. The fickleness of the candy glass seemed to just kind of be dependent on what the candy glass felt like doing that day. I'm not 100% sure on the science of it and why it um, com sometimes comes out cloudy and sometimes comes out like perfectly clear. I also noticed that on hotter days when it was about 20 degrees inside, the candy glass would start to drip and get quite sticky. So it is fickle. Um, and I would say that candy glass is probably the last thing you want to do before you start decorating. So leave that till the end, bake all of the pieces of your gingerbread that need the candy glass and you should be okay. I assembled my house in sections. I knew that I wanted to add sections of fairy lights throughout the house. I just used a set of copper wire fairy lights and my Dremel tool to poke holes throughout the structure. And then I added each part where it needed to go. Because some of my candy glass was cloudy, I had to poke a lot of fairy lights into some sections to get the light to actually come out. But that's just something that you'll kind of have to play around with if you choose to make something like this. Surprisingly, the thing that I struggled the most with in this entire project was actually royal icing. Alrighty, righty, righty. This is an unflattering shirt for me to wear on camera. That's all I'm gonna say. I have latex gloves. That means we're making icing sugar. Ugh. That wasn't completely done. I am I like this? Honestly, not, what did I do? Not the most ideal life choice I've ever made. God, make my icing. Which means I need to do oh. Holy shit. A leg just fell out of my tripod and spilled coffee everywhere. There's coffee everywhere and I have no paper towels. I'm gonna put gloves on because I just did my nails. I didn't do them particularly like amazingly, but I did them. And I hate when you get food dye all over your hands and like no matter how much you scrub them, it still takes like two whole days for the food dye to like unstain from the actual nail. It's like the keratin soaks it up. Ooh, ooh, who am I? I was watching My Strange Addiction like years and years ago and there was a lady on it and the story was that she was addicted to coffee enemas but she would like do them at home. The early 2000s was an absolutely wild time for television, that's what I'll say. I'm doing two cups because I want a thick icing. Loves do mean that I can touch the egg without being grossed out. My the slimy little ovary. I have a goal in life and I want to be Martha Stewart. Martha Stewart is my hero and I think she's like the most perfect woman to ever walk this earth, maybe aside from like Dave Von Teese or something, or Christine McConnell, also perfect. Love all three of them, but they are all my heroes, right? And it would be so amazing to like literally just be one of them. Martha, can I take your skin? Why? Why do I like this? Putting some yellow icing, icing flavor? No, I'm putting yellow food dye. Pillar box red food dye. And as my year seven art teacher used to say, that the way to make brown is to dirty an orange. Taking this, it's like an oil food color. I put a few, it's like a powder and you mix it with vodka, but I'm not mixing with vodka. Okay, I do not have a 
have a good angle. I find that my piping bags keep bursting at this consistency. So maybe it needs to be like this consistency with like a tablespoon of water. Ah, it burst, it burst. I hate myself. Um, I'll do this one. And some of these just are not um, like the same size, even though I use the same pattern. And I think that's just gonna be the reality of working with gingerbread. Oh no. Oh no, stuff together. Oh, fuck. So I've made royal icing a few times and I've never really managed to get it to the right consistency that it needs to be to create like really beautiful artworks with it. I did a little bit more research this time and I found that there are three separate types of consistencies for royal icing. So there's piping, flooding and then meringue consistency. And the main two consistencies that I needed for this project were piping and meringue. So I needed meringue for things like string work and details, um, and then I needed piping to actually put the structure together. So for the first tries, when I was putting this house together, I kept making flood consistency and it was leaking everywhere, which you can see in the video. And then I finally figured out I needed to whip my royal icing for like five to eight minutes each time so that it would get that nice thick consistency and hold a shape. And I'm really glad that I figured that out because it meant that I could try string work. So before I was able to figure out royal icing, um, I tried several different types of decorating techniques, none of which really worked. I tried airbrushing food dye on, painting bricks over the royal icing. This all looked terrible and I genuinely didn't think that I was actually going to pull this project off. It was really challenging. It was actually one of the most challenging projects I think I've tried on this channel. I know I've had a few fails and flops, but like this is one that I was really sure was going to be a fail or a flop and it actually turned out really nice. So I was really, really happy with that. So yeah, you can see me here. I'm airbrushing stuff. I'm painting stuff and it's just not working. But luckily, my final version of Royal Icing was able to cover up all of my terrible mistakes. <laughs> So the very final look, I just piped on royal icing at a piping and meringue consistency. It kind of differed between batches. I piped on shingles in grey. And then later I piped on brown brickwork. And then I used this really cool kind of aerosol food spray that I found at Spotlight when I went there to look for stuff for this project. And I sprayed that all over the bricks and around the edges of the building to give it some depth. And that turned out really cool and added a whole lot of depth. I made everything look a lot more creepy and derelict. I know my string works janky. I know it, it could use some design alteration and elements, but I'm really, really proud of it because I've tried it several times and it's just never worked for me. So this is the first time I got it to work and I know I need to mess around with it a little bit more to figure out how to make it really even and pretty and make the designs really beautiful and maybe I need to use different tips, but I'm just excited that I did it. But by the way, string, string work hurts your hands. Like I have bad wrists in general and it hurts so much to push that stuff through a piping bag. So my piping bags were breaking throughout this entire project, which sucked so much and was really annoying and made me covered in sticky, gross stuff for like a week. And I feel like I just got the 
food dye out of my fingernails. So I would definitely recommend getting some reusable silicon piping bags and using those instead of using something like a, like a throwaway kind of cheap plastic bag. I've never used the baking paper bags that you roll up yourself. Um, maybe I'll try that next time. So while I absolutely loved how this project turned out, there are definitely things that could have been improved upon and they're things that I just want to work on in general. So I wish I had the piping skill to create much more beautiful frames. I think that the entire structure would have looked a lot better and more finished if I knew how to do that. So that's something I definitely want to work on. And along the same line, I wish that I had been able to pipe some weather vanes and things like the fencing around the widow's walk, which I wasn't able to do. You kind of got the idea with the, the shingling. I think it helped sell that idea a little bit, but if I had been able to create some really beautiful fences and gates, that would have been great. I also didn't like my doors. Um, when they were baked in gingerbread, they're just a little clunky and like ugly and I couldn't get them to stick to the structure and like open outwards like I wanted to. So they were a little, you know. I also wish that the tombstones in the graveyard, I tried a little harder on and maybe put some funny quotes in using that um, color spray or like written some really beautiful script on them using some food dye because I did try, it didn't really work and I got frustrated and I was like, you know, I'll just leave them as they are. One thing that I did think was cool was I used desiccated coconut and food dye to create moss and grass. That was kind of cool. Ultimately, this was the first gingerbread house that I have ever created and it was pretty ambitious and I'm really proud that I pulled it off. I feel like a normal person would have um, gotten a gingerbread house kit from the supermarket and tried that for like their first experiment and this was this was my first experiment. Um, I like to bite off a lot more than I can chew apparently, but you know, that's how you learn. But I obviously have a whole lot more to work on before I'm at like epic entering gingerbread contest levels of gingerbread crafting and sculpting. And I understand that. As I said, this was one of the more challenging projects I have ever tried. And I think that's really fun. It kind of makes me feel alive when I feel like everything's falling apart and I'm not gonna understand how to put the art together. I think it's really entertaining and fun when everything in the universe is like, you cannot complete this project. And I'm like, I'm gonna try. I'm still gonna try. And I'm gonna keep trying until the universe lets me complete the project. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and me attempting to make a gingerbread house. I'm gonna take a little break for like a week and then I'm gonna jump straight into some fun Christmas content. So I'll see you guys soon.